Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to a chill, productive day in the life. I don't really know like the full scheme of the plants today, but I do know some of the plants going on today. So first thing I had to do as I woke up was just tidy up my home because this was a mix of like ADHD, depression den mixed in with a really, really busy weekend where I really wasn't paying attention to my surroundings. And then I woke up today and I was overwhelmed. There was just a lot to tidy up. The kitchen was a mess. I still have to clean my stove, but I do have to go up to the gym and I had to tidy up my living room. My office was disgusting. And so we took care of that first thing in the morning, which is a noise. And now it is 9.29 and it is a time to head out in a little bit, which this is like my newest incorporated part of the routine. I kind of had like a pretty fixed routine in terms of I woke up and I tidied up and then I went about my day. Now it's I I wake up, I tidy up, and then I head out to the gym. And honestly, it's been a great boost of serotonin. And it's also been great to kind of mitigate the flare-ups that I do get sometimes with my TMJ. As we know, this is the newest, <laughs> this is the newest recurring character in the videos. And I do have to get some blood work done that I am hoping to get done today because I've been putting it off for a few days because I'm scared. But if not today, then at least tomorrow morning, like bright and early because I need to go get tested for my thyroid, which is, is a little bit scary, but doctor's orders. So I do need to go get those done somewhere in the next 24 hours. And so that's part of the plan. I also have sprints today at 1 p.m. and I am not currently reading anything. So I will definitely be starting something. And I am currently working on a diamond painting, which I'll show you a little bit later that I'm super excited about because it's coming out beautifully. And I do need to unbox some things because I've got some P.O. Box packages that should be getting here to die, which is also very exciting. And so I'll take you along with me on the day. Not a lot of going out and about and like running errands, but at the very least, we're being productive at home. And the productivity started with making sure that we set ourselves up for success for the rest of the day. So the house is now clean and that makes me very, very happy. We have a problem, friends. I love athleisure and loungewear a little bit too much. And I thought I'd just share the few things that I've got in. And this is all thanks to a Lara, who is sponsoring this section of the video. Let us start off with the dresses because I have never been a person that buys dresses to work out, but this time I was pretty intrigued because they actually look quite nice and they have got a bunch of different colors. First thing I got was the Everyday Cloudful Wannabe Dress. This is in an olive green shade. Got this and everything else in an XL, so everything runs pretty true to size. It's literally got a pair of shorts under the skirt, which I absolutely adore because there's nothing more intimidating than going to work out in a dress and not have anything under. And it also has a little pocket that you can put like your AirPods case. You can even put your phone in here. I have got this one. The fabric is a little bit thicker on this one as opposed to perhaps more stretchy and breathable, but it's got the same cross string back and it's got built in support. Also has shorts underneath the skirt with the pocket and everything. But the cool thing is that the shorts are kind of detached at the back so that if you need like easy access to go to the bathroom or if you need to adjust anything, you are able to just slip off the shorts without having to take off the entire dress. And then the last dress I got is in this blue shade. It's stunning. This is the Bar Ballet dress. So it is backless in comparison to the other two, but it is honestly so flattering, so comfortable. It's not one of those fabrics that makes you feel too snug. That's one of the first things I look for is just breathability in the fabric. You can not only wear it to the gym, but if you really want it to, just run errands with these on, throw a jacket on top, which is what I did when I was trying them on and using them. If you style those with some sneakers, you're like ready to go. Would you believe me if I told you that before this, I didn't have any black leggings? And this one right here also has that cross fabric right here. So breathable, so light, so stretchy without being see-through. Got spandex shorts, very similar to the leggings. It's just a standard short. It also has the cross fabric right here, which is quite nice. It's got pockets on both sides. And then the last pair of pants I got are the ones I'm wearing right now. It's like a denim fantasy. It doesn't have denim fabric, which is fantastic. It's soft. It's comfortable. It's got this relaxed fit. The coolest thing about Alara is that they really make sure that the prices are the most affordable they can be while still giving you like really good fabric. And they have sizes for everybody. So they're literally thinking of every single body style when they are making their clothes. So from smaller sizes all the way to bigger plus sizes, which I absolutely love because
because anytime I see something I like, I am afraid they will not have something that fits me and I am happy to report that they do. Thank you so much to Alara for sponsoring this section of the video and make sure to use code MALREAT on their website. If you want 15% off your order, I will be leaving everything linked down below, the code as well. And then we can all be comfortable in our athleisure and our loungewear. And I think that's kind of cool if I do say so myself. back from the gym and ready to start sprints literally came back make breakfast and i don't know if i'm the only one that does this but i just need to wind down before like i shower because i run on hot after the gym and i'm still running on hot both because of the gym and because i'm cramping which is rude need to moisturize the face and the lips these are the things i use by the way i've gotten questions in the past as to like what do you moisturize with mel i use the believe the true cream aqua bomb this is like the gel version because they have both a cream and then like a more gel-like consistency that's more water-based. And then for the lips, I use the Laneige lip balm. This one is literally almost, almost out. Like I'm trying to use up all that I have got left. I do have a backup though that I bought in London. Which speaking of London, you see those bags down there? I still haven't hauled nor uploaded any of the London videos I have filmed. And so I need to get started on those at some point. I don't know that I'll edit anything today day but just putting it out there there are london videos there are london book shopping videos london like video essays like that i'm planning it's just like it's a whole thing and the summer depression hit me hard because it's technically our winter like tropical rain season i was not in the greatest of moods it's just been like a really emotionally taxing time of year for me and so i'm trying to preach myself with grace and with kindness and taking it slowly but i can't wait for september october november december to roll around. So there's that. I'm about to start sprints and I think where I'm going to start out with the sprints as far as the reading goes because I do want to read is that I'm going to start solo leveling because I bought this in London it's been recommended to me a ton alongside Villains Are Destined to Die, which I did read and love. And so if that rec is anything to go by, I'm hoping that I enjoyed this too. And we'll kind of go from there because I have been eyeing this one. It's just like been sitting on my ready to read pile for like a few weeks now and I haven't gotten to it yet. This is a diamond painting I'm working on right now. This is folded but like one side is Stitch and his girly pop and then on the other side we've got Toothless and his girly pop so it's a double date and it's adorable and I love it so much and so I have been working on this for like the past 24-ish hours and I've made loads of progress which rarely happens and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. <laughs> I've got updates. I'm almost done with solo leveling, which is great. It's also gloomy about to rain. I do need, however, to figure out what I'm gonna eat for lunch. I think I'm gonna make like a nice little salad with some blue cheese and some chicken. Oh my God, and like lemon garlic honey dressing. Oh my God, I'm a genius. Have I said that before? Solo leveling, it's a manhwa, which is a Korean graphic novel similar to manga. You do read this front to back though. So it is in format, I guess, like more similar to like a graphic novel or a comic as we traditionally know them on this side of the world and I have about this much left so not a whole lot but I am really enjoying this I had no idea what this was about I really didn't know what to expect with this one but we basically follow Jinwoo who is a hunter he is literally called like the weakest hunter of like all mankind which is so awful that people actually call him that to his face and behind his back and he is called that because he is an e-rank hunter which means that he doesn't have the same level of experience, power, healing ability, strength. Like he is above the human average, but he is still not on par with other people that are 
hunters as well. We follow him in this one as he goes on a mission with several other hunters. They basically go into dungeons in order to hunt beasts, but it has like a very specific process to it. You go into the dungeon, but the mission is not really finished up until the big like lair door and the big, big bat is defeated and the door is like fully closed. And so there's a whole procedure in order for like a mission to go right and in order for it to be successful. And this mission is not going successfully at all because they encounter like the big, big, big bad, like something like they've never seen before. It's actually pretty creepy, pretty terrifying. Like, what is this? This is terrifying. I were to see this, Jin Woo is a lot braver than I am because I'd see this shit and run. Although he is underestimated for being an E-level hunter and maybe he doesn't have like the same healing abilities and maybe he doesn't have the strength and the prowess that a lot of other hunters have, what he does have and what he has going for him is the fact that he is very intelligent. He is very smart and he is deciphering all of these different riddles and rules that they are finding as they are in this lair and everybody's hope of staying alive is literally this kid. The one that everybody underestimates and hates, that one. The weakest hunter of all time, mind you. I don't want to say too much because although the synopsis does kind of mention a little bit more, that little bit more is literally happening in these pages. So I feel like the synopsis says a little bit too much, just a tight little bit too much about what happens in the graphic novel. And I don't, I don't consider this to be fair. I don't consider mentioning this last bit too fair because it's part of the surprise, which is why I'm glad that I went into it not knowing anything because otherwise I wouldn't have been like as shocked as I was. And this is kind of cool. Like that twist in that very last bit that I'm currently reading, that part was very good. So I'm glad that again, I didn't know what was supposed to go down. Lunch has been had, friends, and that salad was incredible. I think I really outdid myself with that one. It was so good, and I did finish so leveling. I'm rating this four stars, I think, just because this entire volume felt like a massive setup for the story. It just felt like prologue for what's to come. And I am very excited to read the next few volumes, so I will get volume two ordered very soon because I do wanna see where Yuan will be going next. And I also love the character motivation. It's not one of those stories where he's just a hunter for the sake of being a hunter, because in this world, basically you get your awakening, which is when you find out which type of hunter you are, what level you are, your powers, everything. But it is sort of optional to be a part of the association, so where you kill the monsters. And for him in particular, he'd rather not really be there, but because his mom is sick and his sister has to go to school and the monetary financial situation is not really going that great, he wants to help his household and make sure that he is kind of stepping up to the plate and really helping in whatever way he can. And so despite everything everything kind of going against him in this association, he stays to help his family. And I absolutely love that. And I do hope that we get to see more of it in the next volumes, because in this one it's mentioned, but we don't really get to see a whole lot of it. Like we see very little um, bits and pieces of it, but I really did enjoy it. Like it's a really, really good time. And now we move on to Sweat and Soap. I don't know what I'm getting myself into with this one. I don't also know what this is about. I just know it's also been recommended to me a lot whenever I asked for manga, manhwa, like graphic novel, comic recommendations, like anything graphic and illustrated. And this one has come up a lot recently. If the title is anything to go by, <laughs> I think this is going to be one of those like out of pocket mangas. And so we'll see, we'll see what ends up happening and if I end up enjoying it. <laughs> Finished sweat and soap. Hello. I need to refill my Stanley. It's the emotional support water bottle. Thank you. Hello. I really want to do something excessive, impulsive, and nonsensical. I really want to get the 60 ounce Stanley. <laughs> 
I don't need it. This is already like a weapon in and of itself. Like literally my personal trainer, whenever he sees me with this, he's like, dude, you could literally weight lift as if you had like a five pound weight on your hand if this is full of water. And I'm like, listen, I know it gets heavy. Do I still want the 60 oh Stanley? Yes, I do. But that is beside the point. I finished Sweat and Soap, read it in a single sitting. <laughs> weird one. I really don't know what to rate it, but basically we follow our main character who works at, I guess like a Japanese equivalent of Bath and Body Works. It's called Lilia Drop, I think it was. And she works at the finance department. She has struggled with BO her entire life, body odor, and she perspires a lot and deodorants don't really work that well. And it's always been like an ongoing issue in her life. She was actually bullied for it when she was younger. And so as part of her story, <laughs> one day she just gets sniffed by a guy who works at the company. It is like the head of product development and he just obsesses over the way that she smells. And so he is determined to bring to life the way this girly pop smells. And so he sniffs her all the time and she really likes it. And then they strike a relationship, obviously a romantic relationship. And it kind of goes from there. And the whole thing is just Kim kind of analyzing how her scent changes depending on how she's feeling. He's got like a really like supernatural nose. Like this man can sniff her from like further away. And it's like a whole thing. And I didn't hate it. And I don't know if it's because I'm so fucking single that I'm like, oh my God, it's not that bad. But like, what the fuck was that? Listen, I don't know, but I did not hate my time reading Sweat and Soap. And I do kind of want to read the second volume. It reminds me of when I was reading, this was like way back in the day, this was like two years ago, but when I was reading The Midnight Secretary, that's like a vampire Jose manga as well. Jose basically is adult manga catered to women or like female presenting individuals. It's like, it's very romantic and temporary, literary fiction-y, mostly more on the romantic end. And Sweat and Soap, I think is going to become my new Midnight Secretary. And so I don't know, I'm like, was it a three star? Was it a four star? I think it was a three star, but it's not a three star that deters me from reading the rest of it. Sometimes we just need no thoughts, head empty. And that's kind of what this was, but I appreciated it for what it was. And I'll probably like diamond paint for a little bit because I need like a break and like my eyes just like need a break from words. And then we'll start Immortal Longings. I also need to double check to see if my packages are downstairs because I haven't received a message from reception that I got my packages. But I do, I do know my PO box had some things sent over, but I haven't, haven't heard anything. So I need to double check that as well because may just have a little unboxing for you guys. I don't even know what's there to be honest, but we'll see. We'll see if anything's worth it. Okay, packages are here and I have got three of them. They're all right here and let's just open them. I first have something from Macmillan and they're typically thrillers for some reason. <laughs> So this one is The Connollys of County Down. I've actually heard of this book. Like one of my patrons was literally reading this today during the sprint I just did. The book comes out in literally August. Like it, I think this must already be out and I don't know what this is about. Oh wait, this is the author from We Are the Brennans. I know this book. A story about fierce family loyalty, good intentions gone awry and the consequences of improbable love. Doesn't sound half bad. Doesn't sound half bad. Scoot it further back because I just read Realize I was like really in your faces, but we got this one, which if I'm not mistaken, I ordered, yes. Okay, so it is this, and apparently it doesn't all, oh wait, no, it does all come together. So I decided that I want to decorate my iPad as if it was like the Kindle. I see so many people go like, oh my God, I bought a new Kindle and I decorated it and I put stickers on it. And I just, you know, sometimes I want to be basic. And this is one of those times. So I have a purple iPad, which is why I decided to get all these things and stickers, which are on their way, got them from Etsy, and I'm really, really excited about it. So I can't wait for the stickers to come in so I can decorate properly. But I bought screen protectors because my iPad doesn't have a screen protector and it's about time. Also got a clear case, nothing fancy there. And the pop socket is alongside the stickers, obviously, the part that has got me the most excited. It is literally a little flower and Lord knows I need this pop socket like desperately because I have have the worst grip on my iPad. And so this is going to come in quite nicely when I am like gripping it. 
and reading. And so very excited to set this up. And last but not least, I do believe this is the Bone Season by Samantha Shannon because I pre-ordered the 10th anniversary edition. And so this must be it because the book already came out. I already peeked and it is it. And I'm very excited about it. I read the Bone Season back in 2021. And it is a book that I've been meaning to reread for a while because it is also another one of those books that I read in like my delusional 24 hour readathon stage. And I really enjoyed the book. I just know that upon a reread, I'd probably love it 10 times more because the storyline itself, like the construction of this sci-fi dystopian world was so fascinating. And the romance between Warden and Paige as a villain hero romance was just out of this world. The heart for comfort, the longing, the angst, the everything was just on point with it. And I just really enjoyed the book. And so I can't wait to reread it in this revised 10th anniversary edition. It's also just so pretty in comparison to the old cover. <laughs> updates friends and this is one of them <laughs> so let me tell you worked out workout was great went to get my blood work done and my thyroid is actually fine thankfully just in case you were wondering carpal tunnels here friends <laughs> it's arrived at the party and so now i have to be braced up for four weeks as much as i can and sleep with this thing on and i also have to brace the other one to sleep so you know it's going to be a very girly pop look just me laying just laying there with two braced up arms just get the visual going mel laying down with a mouth guard and two braces on her wrists just sleeping there I have to update you on what i did read which wasn't much because I was tired. <laughs> I was very, very tired. My downfall really is trying to read at night. I just simply cannot compute it. I cannot do it sometimes. And there are days, like some days when I'm sprinting at night, I'm like super productive. Other days, not so much. And yesterday was one of those days where reading at night just simply did not work for me. I fell asleep while I was reading The Bone Season and it was a disaster. So I first picked up Immortal Longings because again, I have to get this done sometime soon. And I got 18 pages in before I said I need to read something else because the book is good in a way that a Chloe Gong book is good in my subjective opinion. I really love her books. I love These Violent Delights. I loved Our Violent Ends, two of my favorite books. And I'm very excited to read this and to also at some point read like Foul Lady Fortune, half the arc for the second book. Like I, I have all her books except for the novella, which apparently I do need to get in order to read that in between this and the second book of this series. However, it just didn't have like the grip of starts. I don't even know like the full synopsis, full transparency. All I know so far is that we live in a kingdom and we have our little crown prince situation. He's a jumper and so basically there are people who have the ability to get their key into other people's bodies. It's almost like the visual is almost as if you were to see like the astral projections in Doctor Strange and their projection gets into other people's bodies and they are able to control the bodies, walk with them, talk through them. And so we have two different POVs at the moment, one with the prince and then the other one with a girly pop named Kala, I think. Yes, Kala. And she's also a jumper. But aside from that, don't know a whole lot. But I'm sure this will be in another vlog that I'm planning on starting after this one. So you'll see the thoughts and the opinions anyway. And then I started The Bone Season because I unboxed it here. I was excited about it. I've already read The Bone Season, but I was excited about the prospect of a revised edition because although I really enjoyed my reading experience with the original edition, I thought it was just a little bit too dense or maybe it was just my delusional readathon brain back when I read it. And so in this one, we follow Paige Mahoney, who is living in a futuristic dystopian London, where being a clairvoyant is wholly against society's rules. She is one, she is known as the pale dreamer. And then a bunch of shit basically goes down where she discovers the truth of the society 
they live in and how everything is run like underground and whatnot. And so you've got like crime syndicates and secret organizations and societies and whatnot. And it's super cool. And the writing for this one is a whole lot better than the first one already. So I'm excited to keep on going. And you know, that's all I've got for you today. <laughs> I'm about to skedaddle and just unwind for the rest of the afternoon slash night and just have a good time, rest this puppy up and not do a whole lot. I hope that you enjoyed this little day in the life full of of reading and small bouts of productivity and that you guys are having a great day wherever you are. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Comment down below what you're currently reading. What have you been up to these past few days? Are you excited that the fall is almost here? That August, well, at the time the video is going up, it'd already be September. So are you are you glad that August is over? How did the super moon event and, and all of those full moons affect you in August? Because it threw me off. Like it was just bad. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't done so already for more bookish videos like this. You already know the vibes. And also if you want to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon linked down below if you want constant live shows, a Discord server, a book club, and just a whole lot of fun. Have a lot of exciting things planned for September from game nights to playing hunt the killer games and solving murders <laughs> to also doing reading sprints and plan with me's and whatnot. So if you don't want to miss out on any of that fun, the Patreon always linked down below. If you've reached the end of the video, let us leave a, ooh, what should we leave? Let's leave a soap emoji. <laughs> for sweated soap, which I actually will probably be borrowing volume to a very soon. I love you all so, so much, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye!